Howdy folks, Nathan here with a 2021 Lexus ES all-wheel drive. And this vehicle is very special because it shares a lot of components with other Toyotas, but on its own, it is fairly remarkable. And in this video, I'm gonna take you all around it and you're going to see it perform with its all-wheel drive system. All right, let's talk about what's under the hood because what you're going to find in both a Toyota Avalon and a Toyota Camry with all-wheel drive is basically this engine. It is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine that puts out 203 horsepower and 187 pound-feet of torque. Now here's the good news. Despite the fact that it is all-wheel drive, it's very efficient. This vehicle combined gets 28 miles per gallon. Now it does have an eight-speed automatic transmission, but one of the reasons why it gets such good MPG is because it's able to decouple the all-wheel drive system and make it just front-wheel drive when the rear wheels are not needed. And it really works. Not only does it work in terms of MPG, it really works in terms of traction. There is some crazy stuff going on here under the hood. Guys, I have never seen violet purple colored bolts under the hood of any vehicle from a factory in my life. Yeah, okay, some kids with a rattle can, I see crazy stuff all the time, but that really is violet. That's crazy. It drives just like a Toyota, except the spring rate is much more mellow, very creamy, really good ride. Not all all-wheel drive cars ride well Sometimes they're a little stiff. There's a little bit of extra weight from the all-wheel drive system. There's extra drag. These types of things can affect the ride. Not so in this car's case. As a matter of fact, even though it only puts out 203 horsepower, this thing moves. It actually has really good legs. But the most important thing, and the reason why you're here with me, is to talk about the fact that it has all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive system in this vehicle can split torque 50-50, front and rear, when it's needed. When it's not needed, all the power goes to the front wheels, making it a much more economical vehicle. It basically has an electromagnetic coupler that works right below me. And it just stops all the motion going to the rear when it's not needed and lets the front take over. So remember when I was saying that this vehicle shares a lot with the Toyota Avalon and the Toyota Camry? Well, in terms of the Avalon and the Camry, they have a very similar type of platform. Obviously, this is stretched just like the Avalon because it has a 113-inch wheelbase. So what you're looking at here is something that physically has a lot of the characteristics that an Avalon would have in terms of packaging, and in terms of space, and obviously, once again, wheelbase. But it looks like a Lexus. And this is good news because Lexus has recently changed their exterior styling to be sharper, a little bit more aggressive but there is a negative. If I put this next to an LS or an IS, you're gonna have a hard time telling the difference between them because they look so similar. It's not necessarily a bad thing because this is, by comparison, a relatively inexpensive Lexus, but for those people who own an LS, they don't wanna get it confused with an ES. Check out the sides. Now, <laughs> this is really pretty. I, I really do like Lexus exterior designs. I'm not 100% sold on this chrome bit here on the mirror, but I do like this, the fact that they made this black. The lines are very aggressive compared to some softer designs I've seen out there on other vehicles. Nice sharp line going along the side, but in the back, that's all Lexus. Look at this. <sighs> there are a couple minor issues. This isn't the hybrid, right? So, uh, I mean, I know it only has a 2.5 liter engine, but I wouldn't mind having some exhaust ports for some reason, automakers are just getting rid of them left and right. That's including Lexus. So when you're thinking about a vehicle like this, you're probably going in the back of your mind, why well, would I want something that's very similar to a Toyota, but costs a lot more? There's a very simple reason, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the exterior, even though I do think it's fairly attractive. It has everything to do with the interior. Lexus interiors are known to be extremely high quality, and this one is no different but there are a couple things I wanna point out that aren't, they're not great. Let's talk about the good stuff. Fit and finish on 98% of this interior is absolutely fantastic. Everything feels rich, expensive, absolutely well put together. The stitching is immaculate. The seats are remarkably comfortable. 
gear lever feels great. Everything else you touch when you reach out is really nice. This, which very few people are gonna touch, feels very nice. Even this and this. But this piece of plastic here is really hard and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. There's another thing that you should know. Now this is a 12.3 inch screen, which is very clear, very nice. It's not a touch screen. You can do this all day long, nothing's gonna happen. In order to use this screen, you have to use this pad. It's not my favorite component. It is haptic, so it has feedback. As you move your finger around, you can feel it as it's clicking over things. But when you're driving, using this sucks, honestly. This is not my favorite thing. So, the minor issues. This, this, and the fact that that's not a touch screen. Everything else is fantastic. All the switch gear is exactly where it should be, and it feels just as good as it does on higher-end Lexus models. Oh, big point here. If you're going to use the radio, you can actually tune with this outer dial here, and then volume, of course, with this dial here. I know that doesn't seem like a big deal, but you'd be surprised how many people can't change the station. Finally, overall controls and everything else are wonderful, but the best part, Mark Levinson stereo system. Oh my God, it sounds amazing, but you do pay a premium in order to get it. Now there are a couple of other things that is an eight speed automatic transmission and has paddle shifters because I'm sure a lot of you people are gonna be using paddle shifters. <laughs> Sorry, it's kind of a little useless. I guess if you're trying to have a little bit of fun, could play with these. Now, by the way, if you leave it in first gear, like I am right now, and then you accelerate, once you get past a certain RPM, it'll automatically go back into drive. It's not gonna let you hoon, but you can take traction control off. And if you do that in the snow, all of a sudden, <laughs> you can actually get this thing to drift a little bit. The thing is, is that once you take it into the snow, as you're seeing in this video, and you accelerate and you push it really hard, the rear end does exactly what it's supposed to do. And this is an older all-wheel drive system. This is actually something that's been around for a little while. The system itself is very simple, but it works. And most importantly, it's reliable. The only thing that you can do really to change things just a little tiny bit is the settings. So you can go from normal to sport to eco but it's really not gonna change the way this car performs. You put your foot into it, it's still gonna move. So there's another thing that's awesome about being related to the Camry, but more importantly, to the Avalon, and that is lots of backseat room. My leg room is excellent. Now, as we mention all the time, we talk about our height, and the reason why is because I'm sitting behind myself, I'm 6'1", and the seat is back, almost as far back as it goes, and I've got tons of extra leg room, and I've got pretty good headroom, too. Here's another thing. Of course, you have good space for a middle passenger. A fairly good size area, cup holders, and a pass-through. All of that is great. On top of that, down here, you are able to charge your cell phone. Now, I know I'm not exactly your luxury guy, all right? I know it. hard rides are usually fine with me. However, I did grow up with an old man. He's a military guy, but he was also an attorney. And he loved his Cadillacs and Lincolns. He loved the lofty ride, the soft, magic carpet, spongy feel. And this car kind of has that. But it doesn't embarrass itself in the corner either. I really am impressed with the way they dialed in the ride on this car. Steering response, the weight is good, but it's fairly light not like you're pushing with one finger or anything like that it just works and the overall sensation is a vehicle that makes you feel like you're being coddled and it's competent and i think those two things alone are worth the price of entry i have the sticker here and the reason i brought this out is because i wanted you guys to understand what it competes against technically it's competing against itself if you buy a toyota avalon all-wheel drive xle which is sort of the base model it comes out to just under $36,000. If you get a fully loaded Toyota Avalon Limited, which has all the bells and whistles, the nice interior leather, everything else, and you fully load it, it comes out to around $47,000 or $48,000. Once again, this is before you have discounts from various dealerships. Okay, so what about this vehicle? Well, it starts at $39,900. 
basically 40 grand. However, with all of the additions, including that extremely expensive Mark Levinson stereo system, $52,900. That is a lot of money, but think about it. You are getting a Lexus with that incredible interior with a couple minor issues. And on top of that, you're getting an all wheel drive system that is proven. And as I said before, you're getting a Lexus. I mean, come on, are you gonna complain about a $50,000 Lexus? Come on, I'm kidding. The point is, is that if you want this type of quality, but you're willing to take a step down in terms of interior and design, then the Avalon might be the right way to go. Otherwise, this ES is fantastic. For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.